Hi, everybody. It's Dave Kirby with you once again, host of the One Simple Thing podcast. We take the last couple of weeks of every year, we count down the uh, 10 episodes that have resonated most with our audience uh, by a number of downloads. So these are the ones that were the most downloaded, most listened to for the past year. We're up to number eight on the list. It comes from my guest, Patrick McGinnis, and the title of it is The Secrets of a 10% Entrepreneur. Hope you enjoy it. If you dream of being an entrepreneur, but you still want to work at your day job, then you have to learn to make every moment count. If you're really committed to following your dreams and making the entrepreneurial life a reality, then you'll need some strategies to make sure you're working as efficiently as possible. That's what my guest Patrick McGinnis is going to teach us on today's One Simple Thing podcast. It's time to build a better business by building a better you. This is One Simple Thing. Welcome to the show. Dave Kirby with you. Glad you could join me again as we uh, continue our uh, really fascinating conversations with Patrick McGinnis as he talks about his book, uh, The 10% Entrepreneur. Uh, Just the idea that we don't have to quit our day job and dive in with both feet. We can start small and see where it goes and and, uh, let it grow at a pace that's comfortable to us. Uh, so it, it, it's really some great information. Pick up a copy of the book. Again, it's called The 10% Entrepreneur. We have a banner ad on our website. Just go to onesimplethingonline.com. Uh, Patrick is a venture capitalist. He's also a 10% entrepreneur himself. He's got a portfolio of angel investments and advisory positions in startups around the world. And again, his book is uh, available. Just go to our website, onesimplethingonline.com and click on the uh, banner ad for Patrick McGinnis. Patrick, thanks for being back with me today here on the One Simple Thing podcast. Thank you for having me. Yeah, this has really been great conversation over the last couple of episodes. I hope people will go back and listen to them and uh, absolutely hope they'll pick up your book called The 10% Entrepreneur. We have a banner on the website I'll tell you about uh, in just a bit. Uh, So a 10% entrepreneur is not somebody who just commits 10%. It's it's some, you know, like, oh, if I make it, I make it. If I don't, I don't. It's talking about the amount of your time and resources that you're willing to commit to try and do something on the side where you don't have to quit your day job, right? Exactly. Even though it's 10% of your resources, you're still, I, I would say, 100% entrepreneur. You're doing something, you're building something, and it's it's a value to, to all of your life. And we talked about the fact that there might be sacrifices, right? We can't binge House of Cards all weekend. If we want to be an entrepreneur, it might mean that we watch one episode and then dive into working on our business or whatever. Absolutely. That's right. Can you give us some examples of maybe, some, and you have a little bit here and there, but can you give us maybe an example of somebody who's adopted this uh, 10% concept and how it's changed their lives? Absolutely. So one of my favorite stories in the book is actually a very good friend of mine, his cousin, heard about the book and he called me up and he said, I really want to tell you my story. So I had no, you know, we were Facebook friends and I, and I sort of had been following a little bit, but what I didn't know is he'd been building this amazing company. So his name is Gabe Haim. He lives in Long Island and he works at a car dealership. It's uh, out in, uh, in the Oyster Bay area and he's been working there for a long time and, you know, very successful guys done really well. And he and his, one of the other guys that work there uh, would talk about starting ideas all the time. You know, what can we do? We want to start something. We're, you know, we're friends. We're entrepreneurial. You know, we have all these sales skills. What can we do? And then they decided to buy these home brewing kits. And so they bought them. And I think on Amazon.com actually. And they started messing around with making beer and they got pretty good at it. And they decided to start a microbrewery. And so they thought about, okay, what are the resources we have? And they basically knew, okay, well, we have some money. We've been working hard. We have savings so we can invest a little bit. We got some time. We work hard, but we've got you know our nights and our weekends, and we have some knowledge we've built up actually brewing. And so they got together and they basically got this little strip mall. They opened a little brew pub. They actually did all the renovations themselves, so they spent minimal amount of capital to do it. And they did this all while they were working their day job. Absolutely. And they built up a little presence on social media. Uh, Gabe's wife uh, did did a bunch of stuff on Instagram and Facebook, and you know, basically they launched this 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 beer. And it's called Oyster Bay Brewing Company, and they eventually, you know, fast forward to today, they now have you know more than twenty employees. They moved into a six thousand square foot location. They uh, they serve their beer at Islanders games. Well, they'll be Brooklyn next season. Uh, they serve their beer at Yankee Stadium. They're in hundreds of outlets all over New York, uh, sort of metropolitan area, and they're still working their day jobs. And they're they're doing great. It's a really amazing story, and I think it it, it just shows you. Um, what kind of what kind of things you can do, quote unquote, in your ten percent? 
wow, they're still working their day jobs too. Oh yeah, they love their jobs. It's you know that's the thing is they weren't looking to get out of their jobs because they didn't like what they did. I mean, they're very good at it. Working in a car dealership can be very lucrative. So they have, you know, a really good situation, but they had this passion and they wanted to work together. And so they created a business by hiring lots of help that allows them to have their jobs but at the same time do all this really amazing stuff on the side. And the the options just it's like a flower blossoming in front of you, right? The options that you now have. So they, even if they, are, the, the company they work for goes out of business, they've got a fallback. Plus this uh, entrepreneurial venture allows them to be generous and help others and provide for their family and lay up a retirement. So all the options that are created from this second venture that they've uh, started just make their lives all that much better. Precisely. And just imagine now they don't work at uh, at VW, but just imagine they worked at Volkswagen, given everything that's going on right now. They probably would be having a pretty tough time at their day jobs, but they've got something now that's theirs that they don't need to worry about some you know person in Germany who did something really terrible messing up their their day job or their livelihood. Right. So it just gives us that plan B like you talked about. So where do we start? OK, so uh, last episode, you recommended we go to your website and we take an assessment that kind of helps us figure out what kind of an entrepreneur we are uh where do we go from there so i uh i I talk about this in the book there's a concept i call playing to your strengths and the idea is so you've you've got a limited amount of time i mean i i don't uh i don't have any illusions about the fact that this is a part-time this is a side endeavor and so as a result you've got to find a way to do things that are in a very efficient way and, and really make the best use of your time and other resources. And so when I was starting to do this, you know, I did this about five years ago and I, I started looking for things to do and I made all kinds of mistakes and I didn't know exactly what to do and I really struggled to figure out what was the best fit for me. And I, I met a friend of mine who um, I had not seen in a long time and I looked him up online and I Googled him and he had a bio on the, on the internet and I read his bio And it occurred to me that in about two minutes, I could figure out by reading his bio exactly what he was good at. And so it inspired me to actually write my own bio. So I sat down and I wrote a pretty exhaustive biography of all of the things I'd done academically in my career, the skills that I had, the relationships that I had. And when I did that, I then read it over and it was almost – it just was kind of amazing because immediately I thought, well, there's about five or ten things that I can do. I just hadn't taken the time to really think through what I'm good at or who I know or what my relationships are or or, or where my interests are. And so that's the big uh, sort of recommendation that I make to people in terms of figuring out what they want to do is sit down, go through that exercise. And it may take a couple of hours. You know, It's the kind of thing you want to spend time on. But it's so valuable and really drawing out what you should be doing and then you match that bio to things that get you excited so if you are an actuary and you hate your job well then don't be an actuary in your 10 percent. but you have skills that you developed as an actuary that you can apply to your 10 percent uh so it's it's like a business plan only it's about me it's it's, absolutely it's a me plan right yeah uh, that makes a lot of sense um and you know one of the things i think that you know we talked about on the first episode the the obstacles or the drawbacks people have in their mind is they think well i don't have time to do all the stuff that's necessary but it, with these days you don't really need to because there are so many options as far as virtual assistants go uh whether it's overseas or here in the u.s or whatever so uh it, it's not about you having to devote all your time it's about you coming up with an idea that fits your skill set and then uh and then starting to devote time to to and you cover you cross those bridges when you come to them Absolutely. And if, for example, I'll give you a good example of, of how sort of time non-intensive this can be. I am an advisor to a company, uh, a great company called Bunny, which is a community of creative talent. It's sort of like a global network of people you can hire to do things. So you need a logo, you can hire somebody. You need a voiceover artist, you can you can hire somebody. So it's a great business. And I met this, the CEO and he needed help on figuring out his budgeting and some of the things that are financial that they do in the company with the CFO. And that's what I've done in my career. I know how to do that. So I do an hour a month call with the CFO. That's basically the extent of my involvement. Yeah, we email here and there, but it's really that I agree that I spend an hour a month. In exchange for that, they gave me a half a percentage of their company. And the company, is, according to the Economist magazine, is worth about $50 million. So my hour a month is right now got a street value of $250,000. Wow. You talked about that on the last episode, that one of the five types of entrepreneurs 
is uh, an advisor, right? But instead right. of taking money for our wisdom, we take a, a, a share of the company. Man, that's a great example of it. An hour a week, and you got that kind of value in that company. Absolutely. That's, you know, they call it sweat equity. Uh, that's the term for this. Mm-hmm. But I don't sweat too much because it's not a lot of my time. So we sit down, we make this uh, kind of this plan of who we are. We, we evaluate our lives, all the stuff that we've done. Is there a formula for that? Do you talk about it in the book, kind of lead us through that exercise? I do. I have two exercises that I really, uh, that I think that I use personally. I mean, this is, again, I eat my own cooking. This is, this, the whole entire book came out of my sort of three or four years of trying to figure out how I was going to do this. And so hopefully I'll I'll save people a lot of time and energy as they read it. And what, uh, the first exercise takes you through how to write that, that, that bio. And then the second exercise helps you figure out what do you really want to do? What do you enjoy? And, and what I recommend is just make pretend that you, that you go to work, um, one day and the door is locked and basically they won't let you in and the company went bankrupt and you basically have to figure out what you want to do at that point forward. What would you want to do? It's basically the idea of removing this this concept of opportunity cost or the idea of you're leaving some sort of something behind. If you have nothing to leave behind, what would you do? And so if you can match what you're excited about, what you're passionate about with the things that you're good at doing, that's where you want to spend your 10%. A friend of mine said his dad always told, asked him when he had a dilemma like that, he'd say, well, what would you do if it weren't for the money, right? So it, re- it removes that barrier and allows us to really kind of explore what really is important to us. Right. It's very freeing. And I know that because I went through, you know, I, I worked at a big corporate job and my company blew up and I kind of lived that situation. And that experience actually taught me that it's not a fun thing to go through, but in terms of clarity, uh, it's quite valuable. Well, I would recommend everybody pick up their copy of the book and uh, go through those exercises with you. I think we kind of have our uh, action step today, which is to which is to start to kind of compiling that professional biography of of everything that we can do and who we are and what our experiences are. And uh, you can get the book to help do that. Patrick, thank you again for being here. I'll tell everybody how to pick up the book here in a second, but uh, looking forward to next time. Thanks a lot, Dave. If you'd like to pick up a copy of Patrick's book, it's called The 10% Entrepreneur. Live your startup dream without quitting your day job. There's a banner ad on our website. Just go to onesimplethingonline.com. You'll see it right there on the right-hand side of the page. Just above that banner ad in the top menu, you'll see Support the Show. If you click on that link, it's going to take you to a page that's got ways you can help get the word out about uh, One Simple Thing. Uh, There are links there for you to send a tweet or a Facebook post. And also, there's a link to iTunes where you could leave us a rating and review. Uh, How uh, we show up on the charts on iTunes is directly related to subscriptions and uh, downloads and ratings and reviews. So they really do matter. And if we can climb on the charts, then more people can uh, find the show and, of course, hopefully uh, be helped by the the wonderful wisdom that our guests bring. So would you mind leaving us a rating review? I'd sure appreciate it. Again, just go to onesimplethingonline.com and click on support the show to leave your rating and review. Thank you for listening today. I'm Dave Kirby. I don't take for granted one person or one moment you spend listening to this program. I really, really appreciate it. I'll see you next time here on the One Simple Thing podcast. 